Exactly, I like that. Precisely. Sorry, it I'll goes on to say okay, they also know, believe okay. that they have the right to use force, including deadly force, in defense of their land, property, and family. And my response to that is, yes, you come to my house and you bring that kind of pain my way. I do have the right to use excessive force in defense of my land, my property, and my family. That's a, that's a so fundamental human right. Pardon? Pardon? It says so in the criminal code, section 35 or 36 states, if uh, if the land is uh, held under a claim of right, whoever is on that land can defend it at any force necessary. Yep. And so, yeah, Derek said, ahead, you know what? Sorry. I got the fucking no, no, law go behind me. <laughs> <laughs> now, as... Uh, as Dean said earlier, what this what this notice is is profiling at its best. Do you want to get into that a little bit more and recover that? Well, it it is profiling. As soon as you basically start to profile an identifiable group, that's profiling. It's no different than say putting out a, a bulletin about uh, be cautious of all black people out on the streets of Toronto today because uh, black people have been known to be more aggressive than white people, right? So they pass these laws saying, no, the police can't do that anymore. That's profiling. That's completely against the law. So now they come up with this thing saying uh, that, uh, that they're calling us now FOTLs. So they've given us a name. So now we're an identifiable group. So you know if, what you ask me, if you ask me, I think uh, the Human Rights Commission is going to be getting a complaint on Monday morning from me because now this is willful promotion of hatred against an identifiable group. This is actually a hate crime now. Yeah. Oh, definitely, because they're going to spread this around, and Canadians are going to go, oh, did you hear about them free men? <laughs> well, actually, I don't think they're going to be throwing this around, because this is actually a restricted document that's supposed to be only for the RCMP. <laughs> oh, this so, is true, but I mean, okay, so we're throwing it around. Yeah, and I don't give a shit. Uh, if someone sent it to me, it's been online. It, it, what it tells me is that there's people in the law enforcement community that are on our side. Because yeah, for they some don't reason, like what the fuck's going on. For some reason, all this stuff is being made public, and it's being made public by somebody. And I think people within the law enforcement community know that we're nonviolent, we preach do no harm, we preach being honorable, we preach obeying the law, we preach being good people, and now we're just being literally uh, politically assassinated by the RCMP, who's supposed to be an organization protecting law-abiding people. You know, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, and I'd like to say... Go ahead. No, you know what I say to that? I say, you know what? Fantastic. Okay? Sure. You know what? You can fucking just tell me whatever it is, okay? Or you can uh, you can say, yeah, yeah, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. Show me proof that that's not the case. Show me proof that that's not the law. Show me proof that I can't do those. Yep. Yeah, there you go. I would like to see an affidavit from, from, from the commissioner of the RCMP, a sworn affidavit under oath of him saying that we don't have the right to use deadly force in defense of my family if somebody breaks into my home. Exactly. You you swear that on the record, you fucking asshole, and then we'll talk. Yeah. I'd also like to say to all those cops out there, and yeah, you know, we don't really think highly of you, and that's fine and whatever, but the ones that are doing, seeing what's going on, and that are trying to expose some things and are kind of on our side trying to get it out there, from the bottom of my fucking heart, thank you. Yes. Well, because, because you're you making did. the right choice, you're doing the right thing, and you're standing up for the people you're supposed to be fucking protecting in the first place. They yeah, have to I understand... Jump? Oh, sorry, someone's going to speak there. Yeah, this wanted is to Eric ask you... Eric from uh, Everything's Okay, which yeah, is up? next at three. Yeah, what's up, Dina? I love the show, actually, what you're talking about. It's very good. We're talking about RCMP messing around. If you go back not long ago, I don't know if you ever heard about that pro-funk. P-R-O-F-U-N-C. Canadian were jailed just for having a political opinion. Some yep. were gunned down. The bill was supposedly removed by the ex prime uh, by uh, uh, at the beginning of the eighties, after uh, almost thirty thousand people got jailed. But bill never gets removed; it just get rebuilt. Do you have any guess if it's rebuilded or it's still in place? Because I was oh, told I, yes. They they rename things and they move them and then they bury them to be brought back out later in different lingo, right? All right. In a case like that, they come at your door telling you you're enemy of the state because you have, you're a democracy terrorist. What do you do in a case like that? That's big. I tell them to fuck off. I don't give a shit. Yeah, that works for you? That works for you? 
Am I on yes, your jurisdiction? I mean, you I'm, you see me getting paid? You see me fucking going on duty? Like, get yeah. the fuck out of my well, face. An, an enemy of the state's a big one. Like, that's basically, like, what are they doing? Are they declaring war on you at this point? Like, I, I, I don't even understand where they could even come up with a charge like that. Like, defying uh, an enemy of the state. We are having a radio show. We're having an opinion. We're talking yeah. about stuff that they don't like. You're talking okay. against the establishment. You're against war. You're against the bank. And yeah. we're not saying we're against in a bad way. It's just we get points that shows that it's bad what they're doing. And between 50s and 80s, they jailed 30,000 people without trials. They just send them in concentration camp in Canada. Yeah. It's I've still in place. Actually, it's still in place. It's still in place. I can give you a lot of link. I spoke about it yesterday on the show. Yeah, and, please do. That's interesting. And even the CSIS was saying that in municipality government, provincial government, and uh, the whole federal government were infiltrated by outside government. Good. So the thing is, how can we defend with all what you're bringing with the activist side of it? Because here well, in Montreal, what, what I would say bring, you made sure you got backup. But Montreal, well, you, got that, you got like Mon you got like a whole bunch of group of friends outside, and you get arrested without trial. You do what Dean did. You know, you march in, you say, "I am filing this uh, habeas corpus. I am offended." There you go. There you go. Okay, you cool. You make sure it. you got friends on the outside, right? Like yeah, so. People with power of return for you, people that are going to file writs of habeas corpus for people that are in jail, other human beings that are going to stand up for other human beings. Yeah, that's a good thing, too. But because yeah. in Montreal, they decided to criminalize activists. Now, they built a unit that's called a Gamma. That comes out of the anti-gang squad from the Montreal Police Department that arrested Els Angels, Rock Machine, and the Mafia. Now, yeah. activists are at the same level as Mafia and Els Angels in Montreal, and you know what I'm talking about. Of course, and here's the problem, because now now that they've got this basically a major crimes unit that's got nothing left to do because they've gotten rid of most of the major crimes, according to them, yeah. they need something. They're not going to just disband it. They just need a new enemy now. Yeah, it's just like the fucking war on terror. The same shit, you know, we can't fight it. We can't find that. We can't fight against the Russians now. We got we got to come up with a new enemy so we can yeah, keep we need, pumping up on our military. There you go. Instead, instead of getting rid of our military that we're not using right now, how about we just find three new enemies? Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's Perpetual true. So that means that means everything you're talking about, we can use that for the same reason as Absolutely. activists. Absolutely. Now, the only cool, thing cool, I cool. will be will will caution you on is I do know that in Quebec, you guys do run under Napoleonic law. Yes, yeah. I know which it's is, the which worst is different place. Different from the rest of Canada. That 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 means you guys only have the rights you've been afforded by government. It's the opposite. It's the exact mirror image of Anglo-Saxon common law. You're right, because of what I heard, it's the only place in the world where it's the hardest place to use what you're talking about, the, the it law is of sovereignty. Now, now, here's the other difference, though, is that if, here's your argument against that. If Quebec joined Confederation, which I know a lot of people in Quebec don't like to, that's what, that's what they're fighting, saying, no, we didn't join Confederation, right? If they are technically part of Canada... Canada did sign the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which, is, which supersedes, allegedly, any basis of Napoleonic law in Quebec. So that would be the argument you would use, is you would carry around a copy of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and say Canada is a signatory to this. So if you're violating this, then you're breaking the law. Okay, technically, I can go overrule the Quebec laws with the federal laws just to protect myself. With, with the UN laws, of course, because Canada signed on to the UN and basically voided Canadian law by doing that. Okay, cool. Which is all, right, all cool, their thanks. laws anyways, but now you let them know you're breaking your laws by violating my human rights because even Canada is a signatory of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which recognizes human rights. I'm a, I, I'm, I'm a man. I have human rights. And this is the law you guys are supposed to be upholding right now. So that would supersede Napoleonic law, Quebec law, whatever you want. So a lot of the stuff that you that we don't like, we can use to our advantage. Hey, you know what? We don't. You don't even need to go that far. You know what? You got human rights. Quebec's got human rights because you know yep. why? Because Quebec is a part of uh, Paris, the Treaty of Paris, 1763. State that, that too, Quebec yeah. is in fact still under the rule of the French king, and the French king is part of the French government, and the French government is a signatory of the Declaration of Human Rights. So if you got an issue with that, 
you bring that instead of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms for filing, or you can do both or whatever. Um, but for Can uh, Quebec, all you got to do is put in, instead of the uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms, you put in the Treaty of Paris and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You file those two in the record, let's see how fast they drop the case. The Treaty of Paris, huh? Yeah, Treaty of Paris, 1763. Yeah, actually, France... France has another document that goes back to the 1700s called the, uh, the, 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 just the Declaration of Human Rights was, was drafted by a Frenchman back in the 1700s. It's not the UN Declaration of Human Rights. It's, it's known as the French Declaration of Human Rights or something like that. It's another document altogether. You can bring that up, too. There's all sorts of stuff you can look up if you research online a little bit. Yeah, I did a bit on Wikipedia. They were talking about different uh, signature that was done, actually, by a different type of government in Canada. And yep. we're talking about the Treaty of Paris and all those names. I just wanted to make sure that which one we can use in Quebec because actually Adam, the other guy on my show, is totally into your video. So now he's trying to learn that way. But yep. I just want to make sure that I'm bringing him uh, the other so information so he doesn't run uh, in the wrong door. Send your attorney general for your province. Send him a copy of the Treaty of Paris, Univers United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Send him all a copy of that with a cover letter that says, Do you not honor and respect these documents? Okay, cool. If they do, then they can't fuck with your human rights. If they don't, then they're violating the law. They're kind of in a tough in a tough spot once you contact them and put the burden on them to say yes or no. Yes. All right, perfect. Exactly. Thanks, man. No problem, dude. So there, I hope that answers somebody's questions. <laughs> No, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. You guys have been doing an, an absolutely great job. I mean, I love having you on because you're answering questions that we all have. And for those that are new that are listening to the show are realizing, hopefully, that uh, they don't have to put up with a lot of what we've been sold. We don't have to eat what they're serving us. Um, we have our own rights, and it's time that we take our power back. Yes, I actually covered that. Which is the reason that. why I'm... Sorry, which is the reason why I'm doing these shows, because this is what I want for myself, and I can't want something for myself and not share it with other people, because then if something happens to somebody else and I knew that something that could have helped them, then I'm responsible as much as the, the next person for harming them as far as I'm concerned. Yep, I covered that all actually in episode 6, I think, that got uploaded finally. We talk about the fact that your true power is actually in your, in your, uh, in your purchasing power, your, your ability to spend your money where you want to spend it, right? That what that's ultimately it comes down to is we don't have to give these assholes our money. We don't have to shop at Safeway. We don't have to be doing all this nonsense that we're doing and buying the GMO food. But we're all doing it. We're actually the ones that are asking for all this cheap food. So they're just producing what we what we've asked for. Yeah. Yeah. So and then you get all these guys that are going to protest the G20, and on their way to the G20 protest, they're stopping at Starbucks for a latte. Like, are you kidding me? Nah, I personally think Starbucks overcharges on fucking everything. <laughs> it's crap. It's not good coffee at all. It, it, no, it's it, not. The coffee isn't even good. It's fucking garbage. Neither is Tim Hortons. Everybody goes to Tim Hortons, and I'm sorry, but Tim Hortons is Tim disgusting, Hortons and it rots my stomach. It's the worst thing I've ever drank in my life. Hey, I fuck get Tim Hortons, trade, man. I get fair trade <laughs> coffee. <laughs> That's what I get. Fuck, and we fuck love our much. fair trade coffee. I have to say it again, man. I got injured and they kicked me out of the job for not paying me, man. That's and actually, Tim Horton, it's because of them. I, not, I was not arrested last year in Toronto. I wasn't at Tim Horton and the cops came in. It's like, stay in there. <laughs> All right, I'm not cutting anymore. That's awesome. No, you say whatever you want. You're, you know, Eric and the other hosts here are always welcome to jump in at any time if they have any questions. I have no set rules on my show. That's too funny. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll let you uh, take the lead from here. <laughs> well, um, is there anything else that you guys would like to add? Because honestly, I kind of wanted to give this to the two of you to uh, do what you wanted with it, kind of. And um, I'm going to uh, do something maybe a little sneaky here and say that I'm trying to talk Dean into maybe doing a show once a week. Um, and as you all see, he's very good at it. So um, hopefully he'll put that into his hat and think about it a bit more. Well, I got. Yeah, I'm just you know, sitting in the back doing nothing. You know. <laughs> Derek, you're fantastic. I'm sorry. No, you know what, Derek? It's it's funny because you know every sovereign that I've talked to, and I've been talking to more and more and more since I did the first interview with Dean. And uh, I, I have to give him props because he opened me up to a whole new world of the sovereignty that I wasn't aware of. And then 
I was introduced to Derek because of it. And then after being introduced to Derek, I was introduced to somebody else and somebody else and somebody else.